Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Hezzy! What's up? How you feeling, brother? I'm good, my man. How are you? I am blessed, black, and highly favored, man. I had a, a very eventful weekend. I heard you had a very eventful morning. Morning? Oh, this morning was kind of crazy. Uh, I wanted you to hear it, but, you know, per usual with Taylor, she took the best part out of it, you know? So, <laughs> so, so just so we can set this up, so many things are going on in this call in the Breakfast Club. Oh, my God. So what is the call initially about? We were talking about pansexuals. Okay, because Wayne, Wayne Brady, Brady just came out and said that he's a pansexual. Now, what is a pansexual? What is pansexuals? There's pot sexuals. There's skillet sexuals. There's, uh, what else? <laughs> walk, ske- walk sexuals. Oh, walk sexuals. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a whole line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Do you think we have a walk sexual in the room? Right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Do you think it's possible definitely, that we have a walk de- sexual? Definitely, definitely. Wait till you hear why definitely. Chris didn't go to Taiwan. <laughs> definitely. Wait till you hear why the trip got changed to Spain. Just wait till you hear. We'll get back to it in a second. <laughs> All I'm trying to say, brilliant idiots, is that we've got some stories today. Okay? So go on. So, so a pansexual is somebody they say that's attracted to everybody. Right. So an ugly person. So... So you're attracted to everybody. Yeah, so, so you like if you can't get laid, you just take what you can get. That's a right. hole. Transgender. You're a hole. That's it. That's it. Any hole that will let that's you right. in, that's you right. like. It, it. it is. It is kind of like it is kind of something. It's a it's a level of greed there, if, right? Or desperation. I don't think it's desperation because there's some fine pansexuals. Who? Who? Janelle Monet, man. She's the first person I've ever heard say she was pansexual. Oh, I need bro. to see it to believe it, Janelle bro. Monet, fine, bro. But wait, how many different things are there? Because there's just male, I, the female. Number, the number goes. The number varies, right? I saw up to sixty-eight. But what else could you be attracted to? There's male and female. But then there's transgender. There's... Oh, oh, Charlotte. What? They're male and female. What do you mean? Whatever they identify, they are. Yeah, but they got different titles and labels. Yeah, you know there's what I mean? no difference between a trans woman and a woman. So therefore, uh, well, pansexuals that, that, that's not true, but that's are just not my bisexual. Fight. Yeah, that's not true, but that's not my fight, right? So, so yes, in the perfect world, I'm you, just saying, if, if, in if, the perfect world, it would be just bisexual. You're just bi. Yeah, because they. Oh, and the other one is non-binary. They sleep with non-binary people. Non-binary which, means that you're not. You don't either identify man as nothing or a woman. Yeah, which is fine. That's the easiest thing to be. That could be fine because no? you don't have to prove it at all. What do you have to do? I'm until it's time, until it's time to not. oil up your ankles and let your Tim's tap. I'm non-binary, bro. Yeah. I don't know what none of that shit means. All I, I just know like is that's what every one of these celebs does when they need a little attention when shit ain't working out for them. The funniest thing about the Wayne Shut Brady up. thing is that Celebs Wayne Brady wear said, these fucking thing, these like identities, his outfits. If I was someone who was an actual pansexual in the fucking kitchen, like really getting after it, yes, I would be upset at these celebs that just throw it on as a shield. I would think a pansexual is somebody who's sexually attracted to pants. They are that. That would make more sense, right? That's what women should be. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I, we've been trying to marry pansexuals for centuries, right? Now, all of a sudden, it's popular, and they're misconstruing as something else completely. It was interesting that Wayne said he has to do some research still. Like, could you do the research, then do the press release? <laughs> like, right? Like, you don't even know you pansexual. I like roller coasters. How many you been on? Well, I haven't tried them yet, but they look fun. Get the fuck out of here, bro. That's what I'm I saying. I need you up in the guts. Whoa. Yeah, and it's something about <laughs> someone up in yours. <laughs> but it's something about the pansexual phrase that doesn't feel like a commitment. The same with the you know non-binary. It's all. It's like, well, come on, yo, be about it. What does that mean? I, I need a commitment. What does non-binary means? You don't feel like a man every second of the day. Sometimes you feel like a woman. We all been there. You get your toes done. I don't know, but see, I don't like that either because we all. I like getting my toes done. I don't. That's mean, what I'm saying. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, yeah, gonna yeah, have yeah, those yeah, moments yeah. where you're tapping yeah. into what do you call it? Your divine feminine, yeah. and then your divine masculine. Oh, Come on, son. They that's, just stealing our shit. They just stealing our shit. That's, Get your own shit. That's why I didn't like what Will I Am said because Will I Am was like, yo, he got feminine traits because he was raised by a woman. Well, he didn't say traits. He just said he he he's he's feminine. And I'm like, well, what does that mean exactly? If he's just talking about mannerisms, that could just be sassy because there's nothing wrong with having divine. feminine. 
feminine traits. Pull up the divine feminine you know, traits. Being nurturing, being caring, right? That's what, you know what I'm saying. That might That's be it. traditionally feminine, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have some of that in you as a man. You want to you want to play what I am? Where it's I all mean, in the same thing. Whatever you think, but we were on to something up with, oh, with the pants. That's so what the just Wayne Brady. So yeah, we were talking about the Wayne Brady thing. So we had actual pansexuals calling up. A lot of people identify as pansexual, didn't know. They called the Breakfast Club this morning. One called in particular. She drives uh what's it called? One care? She drives a bus that has uh, people that are uh, mentally disabled. But we didn't disabled. know, so she was talking to us about, you know, being pansexual. And then I started hearing these noises in what the background. What did you hear in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I started hearing these noises, right? I mean, you could insert the audio. All jokes aside, this is not a joke. This yeah. is what it was. So I go, do you have one with you now? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what is going on? And then that's what she told us she drives for... One care, and it's the adult disabled now, people. Can I just ask you a question just because I'm a little bit of a detective here, yeah. right? Like, if you're a pansexual, you might be in. One of the things you're attracted to might be I should have asked people that. with yeah, mental disorders. Mi disorders. Mentally disabled. I should have asked her that. So, do you think that's what she was doing? Do you think nah. that she was... No. No, I think she was just that's doing not her agenda. job. You think she was shitting where she eats? Oh, yeah, that's not a gender, though. You're doesn't right. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a gender or not. No, I don't. It doesn't matter if it's <laughs> a was, gender or you not. Know, that's a good question. What I'm saying is, it's, remember, it's not about the gender. What you mean? It's pansexual. I'm everything. I'm attracted to everything. Is it? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Is it? That's a good no, question. No, it means you're attracted to all the genders, but disability oh, isn't a gender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Disability is not a gender. <laughs> you guys are stupid, bro. I identify as retarded. <laughs> How do we know disability is not a gender? No, 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 no. How do we know disability is not a gender? Huh? Because <laughs> bathrooms. Men Take bathrooms, that. women bathrooms. Disabled they bathrooms. Have the, they have the disabled <laughs> bathrooms. I'm just saying. Bathroom. We don't so, know. I'm just saying. That's I, something I you got to take into account. We don't know. Yeah. So, Pansexual. So babies are a gender too? Say again. Because they got the train, the change of babies. Their own bathroom. Babies don't got their own <laughs> yes, bathroom. Yes, they do. They, 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 they change of joy. They, they, they got a little them. thing to, yeah, yeah. to whatever. That's just a tray to change them. Yeah. The table to change them. Yeah. That's not their own bathroom. You have a what? Oh, let's hear it. I know you got the audio. I just told you I don't want to listen to it. <laughs> this is really Who good. Who cares? We're having a conversation. <laughs> It'll make the conversation better. Listen I know I believe it, but like I don't understand the inclination to interrupt the fun, to be like, oh, I have the audio, and I know you guys are having fun and being entertaining, but I'd like to put hey, that to a screeching halt. you know what gender she is. <laughs> Could you stop? <laughs> me. Stop. I didn't interrupt. I waited till y'all finish your little laughs, and that's the <laughs> Your little, little laughs. laughs. <laughs> the point of the show. <laughs> it's shocking to me you don't have it ready to go. It's unbelievable. It's shocking to me that you're like, hey, I'd like to interrupt the podcast to not be ready Andrew, for the thing Andrew, I want to Andrew, are you to. okay? Relax. No. <laughs> I'm not okay. I was having a time in my life. We were talking about having sex with disabled people. And then you interrupted it. You interrupted it. We finally caught this woman. She called and she snitched on herself in the breakfast club. She had a bus full of them. If you jack off, who knows why they were moaning? If you jack off all the time and don't have sex, you're technically a handyman. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You fix it, Felix. You know what I'm saying? You fix it, Felix. Think about it. You fix it, Felix. All I'm trying to do. That's another thing they got asexuals. What is that? That means you're not into other people, you're only into yourself. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Listen. It's a lot. All I it's know is 68 genders. You know? It's a lot. Let's hear it, Taylor. How many flavors have you tried? Uh pretty much all of them. All 68? They said, what the hell is that moaning? You got one with you now? <laughs> what the hell is going on? No. <laughs> what is that, man? No, I'm a transportation driver, so I have like I have like people with disabilities that I transport. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now you making the sounds. Bro. Are you trying to talk to him? Were you, trying to, were you trying to communicate to him? I was trying not to laugh. It's annoying. That's my job. That's oh annoying. Ma'am, ma'am, maybe you should tend to in the bus. But let me ask you a question. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Uh, so what, what yes. flavors have you tried? Break down the flavors you've Listen. tried, please. So like cisgendered people, so like men, women, transgender individuals, non-binary people. Like now cisgender ain't nothing but original recipe women now. Yes, it is. 
<laughs> Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way. Happy for you and uh, salute to you and all your endeavors, Some, man. Yeah. They yeah, call her out. They call her out, bro. They hearing it. They're not testing it. And they're like, Ain't nobody trying to fuck this bus driver, yo. Imagine they were just hating on the bus driver. That's what it was. They was hating on the show. Oh, oh man! Crazy. All I know is I don't know what the fuck I know. We don't know nothing. We don't really, really don't. Let's hear what Will I Am got to say, man. Because <laughs> everybody just freestyling at this point, man. Yeah. I had to do a father in my life to guide me through that. My mom did that, which probably made me even ultra feminine. Which is no, I have no shame of being super feminine. What is feminine? You know, I remember in the nineties. That wrist looking. That wrist. I didn't see my video. Yeah, that wrist. That wrist. That wrist. That wrist, that wrist, that wrist look a little crazy. Yo, we need some Growing blue chew. That wrist like, look like it's outside of a goddamn tax place. Why people question? <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> you know, feminine. I'm still feminine. I sit the way I sit. I act the way I act. My, my mannerisms are my mom's. But it was a it was a very. Uh, and I'm strong with my 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 femininity. Who is he talking to? I, I think it's a superpower. Mm. But um, here's that, the thing: I've never looked at Will I Am and thought Will I Am was feminine. Um, and I really wish that the person who was having a conversation with him and may, maybe they did dug a little deeper because I would like to know what his definition of ultra feminine is. Pull up divine feminine traits, Taylor, because I feel like we all have divine feminine traits like you have to have the balance of the sacred masculine and the divine feminine like look uh uh where is it at no put traits put traits we know what the, the, you know what the divine feminine is but put traits divine fem feminine traits i mean if you look at the way i'm sitting right now i bet there's a picture of it yeah. if you look up divine feminine traits. Look, emotional right-brained action is oriented to the experience of joy rather than an outcome emotional strength Seeks self mastery, but is more concerned with sacrificing for the greater greater good. Extroverted, open, vulnerable, and nurturing, cooperative. Yeah, these are beautiful qualities beautiful that every qualities. human being should have. I don't think that's any being any of those make him come across feminine. I think some of like the hand gestures and wrist gestures probably would be more so. But even then, like talk about mannerism, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. isn't that just sassy though? But mannerisms are a choice too. To that's a certain, true. like you uh, you yeah. have control in a way. You know, like Italians are very, uh, what's it called? Um, what is it? Uh, expressive with their hands when they talk, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's a cultural thing. So, yeah, of course he's going to be influenced by, you know, what he saw. But I don't think there's anything wrong in having feminine qualities, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I wish they, I wish he would have, they, they would have dug a little deeper. Because the way he was describing it, he's literally talking about mannerisms, the way I sit. You know, he's like the way I do. What he said? Did he say the way I do my hands? I mean, he definitely said the way I sit. You know what I mean? The way I talk. The way I talk. I'm like, that's just mannerisms like you can get those just by being around someone that don't mean that you're actually displaying so, feminine traits exactly now you know? oftentimes you end up you know copying or being inspired by the mannerisms of the people that you admire yeah you know i think that's why where like the the gay accents or like the gay um mannerisms often come to because i think a lot of gay people look up to women so they're like, oh, that is perfection. That is beauty. That is something that I would like to emulate. So they take that on, yeah. I think, in a lot of ways. But even with gay people, gay people have their own lingo, their own mannerisms. Uh, absolutely. You I'm know just, what I mean? I'm just explaining why a guy who grew up down the block from me in New York with straight parents and went to the same schools as me could yeah. have like um, what you know the gay accent or whatever it is. Yeah. And it's probably because the people that you look up to are talking like that, gay dudes and also women. And uh, he just admires that and is going to copy that. Yeah. Same way we're like, like I, I'm, I'm this white guy. I grew up in New York and I'm using slang. And then people who didn't grow up in these areas are like, yo, why are you talking black? And it's mm -hmm. like, well, that's just the way that people talk here. Mm -hmm. And you grew up in a place where that wasn't the dominant culture. So you just can't wrap your head around it. So you're going to gravitate to whatever the thing you admire the most is or whatever the dominant culture is. Do you think that we have too much conversation going on right now? About? Meaning that meaning that a lot of this stuff that people are trying to work out, they should like work out in therapy amongst themselves first before they bring it to the public. Like when you hear Wayne Brady just come out and say, I'm pansexual, but I'm still researching it. Or you see Will I Am have these conversations about femininity. Don't you think that sometimes people should just work things out with their therapist or their psychiatrist first and then if they want to share it with the world they should yeah no no 
Why? Because then we won't have no content. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we've, been making, we've been making up content for 10 years, bro. Yeah, that's a good point. Give me something to talk about. And I can, I can go right now. Water bottle. Water bottle. Easy. Put your dick in it. Easy. That's all. So your dick is fitting in that, son? Maybe. You no. got a pencil dick oh, no. son? If I'm soft, if I stuff it. Soft. <laughs> on, stuff, on soft, I'm making stuff it in yeah, there. Yeah, fill it. Fill it you up. You know what I'm saying? Why not? <laughs> Yo, speaking of dicks and fit in a water bottle, Chris had a great uh, vacation, uh, but not to Taiwan. What now, happened, Chris? <laughs> what? I'm not coming in off of that intro. You got to revise. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Right. Speaking of huge fucking giant dicks, uh, Chris had a vacation to Taiwan. Speaking of Godzilla's dick. Godzilla's dick. Speaking of Godzilla's dick. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Chris was supposed to go to Taiwan, okay? You were particularly going to enjoy this. Out, Chris? Okay? No. Why out. didn't you end up going to Taiwan, Chris? What happened? Well, so a few months ago, we started trying to uh, book our travel plans, yeah, yeah. and my mother-in-law kept telling us we can't come because the COVID is rising. So I Googled COVID in Taiwan, and the COVID didn't seem to be rising, or at least to alarming levels. So we kept saying, well, why can't we come? Can we come? She said, no, the COVID's too bad. Finally, my wife kind of pressed her, and about a month ago, my mother-in-law said basically what's happened is their apartment that she and my father-in-law live in in Taiwan has been taken over by ghosts. And if we were to go to the apartment, the ghosts would be transferred from her to us, and something terrible would happen to our family in Taiwan. So we said, okay, how about if we come to Taiwan, we don't come inside the apartment, we meet you outside. My, my father-in-law is very old. He's in his 90s. He can barely move. He's in a wheelchair. So we said, well, do, we just want to see him. We'll meet you in the courtyard of the building. You guys come down, and then we won't be in the apartment. The ghosts can't transfer to us. What if the ghosts come with them? That's what she said. She said, the ghosts are going to come. They're going to transfer. And if you even see us, the ghosts will be transferred over to you and something terrible is going to happen. So under no circumstances should you go. So, wow. you know, it's very, very difficult for my wife because, I mean, to be honest, she's not sure if she's going to see her father again. I mean, he's not in great shape. So I said, look, we're just going to go. We're not worried about ghosts and we'll just show up. And what are they going to do? And she said, we're not going. Like, it's not happening. It's Your wife said that? Yeah. So then I said, well, then why don't you ask... Can we come over Christmas? Will the ghost still be there? Yes, the ghost of Christmas past. Duh. What kind of question is that? What are you talking about? Does the, the ghost, ghost go on Christmas vacation? Past will absolutely be there. They will be. Well, that's what. No, no. My mother-in-law said, "Yeah, there's a chance the ghost won't be there in Christmas." So now, that's how can she tell the ghosts are there? Well, obviously, it's all completely. What a terrible son-in-law you are, Chris. What are you talking about? Because clearly something's wrong. <laughs> you post a kid on a plane and go over there and see what the fuck is going on. Which was my exact reaction. We got to do an intervention. We yes. got to go over there. Something's not right. My I mean, own. there's ghosts in the house, dude. You got to get them out of that exactly. house. Oh, my wife Put said, them in a no, hotel or my mother <laughs> has been telling me she's been communicating with ghosts since I was a kid. This is nothing new. Oh, shit. So I said, okay. Hold on. Your mother-in-law's been telling you this for years? No, no, no. Apparently, my w mother-in-law has believed she communicates with ghosts since my wife. This was is a interesting because I never knew. I didn't, I've never heard like the supernatural from the Asians' perspective oh, when it comes big, to ghosts. Big, big part of Chinese culture. I didn't. I knew about like the fantasy world, like with the dragons and everything, but I didn't know about like <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> I did, man. I'm dead serious. I've never heard this before. Why is this funny? It is true. They do. They love their dragons. That's what I'm saying. I've they never heard this dragons. before. Yeah. No, they, uh, like, my in-laws believe in reincarnation. Like, I sat down with them and their friends, and they all told me, like, what they had been in past lives. Just what, did, what did they, what were they? So, <laughs> so it's my... Real, yeah. My mother-in-law is like a very domineering person and kind of bosses my father-in-law around. Right. And they have a friend who apparently was able to see back into the past. And he said what happened was many generations ago, five, six, seven generations ago, your father-in-law was a frog, right? Who I can was see that. in a pond, trapped in a trap. And your mother-in-law was a little girl who came upon the frog in the trap and freed him. And now he's indebted to her for you know, 10, 10 generations or whatever the, the case may be. 
And then we were talking to this other dude, and he was like, yeah, I led the Chinese army in, like, 1540, and I was, like, very influential in taking over, like, you know, certain provinces and stuff. And I was just like, okay. I still think you're a terrible son-in-law. You're supposed to go over there with the Ghostbusters and figure out what the fuck is going on, man. It's not I an intervention. Go. A yeah. fucking exorcism should have happened. Like, you're supposed to do something. Go in there with some sage, clear the place out. All of these spiritual leaders and healers, you know here, Chris, you could have flew somebody over there. I can send somebody over there right now. We'll run those spirits out of that apartment. They're what not- are Chinese ghosts afraid of? No. <laughs> I'm just, asking, just curious if we could brainstorm how to get them out of there. What are Chinese ghosts afraid of? This like, is some great shit. What if we had haunted wet markets? That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Like we could have, like we could really make this into something. Yo. Of, this could be a TV show. This yes. could be a movie. What are Chinese ghosts afraid of? How do we get those spirits to pass on to another life? How do we heal their trauma? I don't have the answers. I don't believe in ghosts, so I don't. I don't have. Come on, one. Chris. Hypothetically, Come on. you gotta believe in ghosts. You don't believe in ghosts? Why? I've seen a million ghosts. Mm-hmm. Charlotte knows ghosts. You never seen ghosts, Char- Chris? <laughs> Charlotte uh, knows ghosts, bro. You never seen a ghost, Chris? I thought my piano teacher turned into a demon when I was a kid during practice. Really? I did have, I did have that experience oh where I looked over and her eyes were like fiery and like the entire room kind of went crazy. And, really? Yeah. What were you playing? Something not Chopsticks. well. Sticks. <laughs> <too. laughs> Thank you. Another it. week of brilliant ideas. I had to do it. It's it just one of the things that had to be done. But yo, Yo Gotti says dun, chopsticks dun, dun, are dun, guns. Dun, 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 On Yo Gotti's new album, he calls chopsticks guns. <laughs> Oh, the sticks. Yeah, chopsticks. Oh, yeah, he said, except something, sh- chopper. something called oh, them chopsticks. Chopper with the sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, something something called them rap. chopsticks. Damn. <laughs> so what rap. happened after she turned into a demon, Chris? Damn, Chris. And so y'all just said fucking and decided to go somewhere else, huh? Look, I mean, I pushed. I said, look, we got to go. We got to see what's going on. I tried calling aunts and uncles to get their opinion, and they were sort of like, just let it go. They had ghosts, too. Yeah, they had ghosts, too. Come during Christmas, so we're going to go during Christmas. Why would you come during Christmas? Most haunted. You know what I'm saying? The most haunted. Like, what the hell? Well, they don't celebrate Christmas. It's just another week for them. Oh. This is a sad story, man. Bruh. This is really sad, Chris. Why is it sad? Because sad. clearly something is wrong. They've gotten to that age where it's like, you know? she's Yeah, she's talking to imaginary yeah, things. Oh, no, man. I agree. I mean, look, they've been locked inside for two plus years since COVID. My father-in-law is wow. essentially an invalid. He hasn't, they haven't left their apartment in two years. So wow. it's not a, it's not a healthy situation. What do you mean they haven't left? They have they not- get groceries? They have a uh, like a, someone who lives with them, a health care aide who goes out and gets groceries. So they just what? Oh, so they don't have ghosts. They have imaginary friends. Yeah, like kids do. Like when kid, yeah, like when kids start developing imaginary friends, which I think is so strange, especially when my my like my kids have imaginary friends. I'm like, y'all got sisters. Like you know, yeah, what I'm but saying? you had imaginary <laughs> friends. You imagined you were a teen wolf, or you imagined that you were. No, I never had an imaginary friend. I just seeing I, I really was those things though. I saw a UFO in third grade. Okay. The flying saucer hovering over the trees. Yeah. I absolutely was about to turn into a werewolf. Uh, I forgot what grade that was. Uh-huh. Uh, the thing from Signs, I saw that standing over me. Okay. As I was sleeping, I felt like the hag was riding me, and as I was waking up, I saw the thing from Signs standing over me. Okay. Ghosts, seen a million of those. Like, please. You know what I mean? Please, Chris. Please. Ghost. Please, Chris. Come on, man. <laughs> what do you guys suggest I do then? You should have went over there and you yeah, get them you out of Taiwan. Go. You can't get them out of Taiwan. That's where they live. And I said, Are my, the ghosts human? I don't know about that. I don't have any. My wife doesn't like to, you know, I think it's upsetting for her, obviously. So she doesn't talk about it that much. That's crazy as hell. Have you heard this before? Damn, Chris. Talk, talk to them, talking to Mike Taylor? Yeah, she, she said uh, that. That was the only thing that was strange about it to me is when we were discussing what to do, my wife, and this was like a month ago, my wife was like, well, my mom believes she's been talking to ghosts since I was a little kid. And she I was like, has been. And I was like, you didn't want to mention that to me before? Why wouldn't y'all believe her? So exactly. Why are you saying that it's something wrong? Right. Because I'm like, it's a mental illness and we got to go over and we got to do something. But then when you put it in the context of someone who's been talking to ghosts for 60, 70 years, but maybe that, it no, is what the, it is. The scary part is not that she's been talking to ghosts for 60, 70 years. Now she don't want y'all around. Mm. If she's been talking to ghosts for 60, 70 years and had no problem with y'all coming. And that's why we before, got to take it seriously. That's, that's what I'm talking hey, about. Listen, I'm talking about you that see, part You communicate with her? 
Does she Barely. speak Asian or, or, or does she, she speak Asian English as well? well yes. But does she speak uh, Asian? Chris got a fucking something. No, up. like, I, I, does, is it she Taiwanese? Speaks, is she speaks language? Taiwanese. There's a dialect Taiwanese and she also speaks Mandarin. Her English is like minimal. So I really... Right. I'm talking through my wife, which is part of the problem. What are you wearing, Chris? You got to so last to time we were over pattern. there. Those things work. Yeah. You asked, do I believe in ghosts? Last time over there, my mother-in-law gave me this. I'm wearing a red bracelet with a jade rabbit on it. I have no idea what it represents, but apparently my mother-in-law said, Chris has to wear this or else there could be an accident. So oh, my God. I haven't That's taken this shit off in over a year. Yeah. And I'm not taking it off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you believe fuck? in ghosts too? I'm hedging my bets. Yeah. I'm hedging smart. my bets. Yeah, you, I mean, you don't know. Smart. I ain't mad at it. You know, if someone gives you a, a fucking bracelet and says, wear this, then you'll avoid accidents. Who gave, who gave it to you? My mother-in-law. She gave me a card. They they follow a uh, like a Tibetan, Not he's not Tibetan, he's from Taiwan, but like a tantric Buddhist uh Leader and he had a car. She said, "This will stop you from having car crashes." I put it in my car. Why not? What's the? How much is it hurt? <sighs> that was depressing, man. They should all put it in their cars, bro. That's a good joke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Al just made a good joke. If that will stop your car from crashing, <laughs> why would they all put it in their cars? That's how you know it's bullshit. That you know what I'm saying, that, or. That's doing as much as it can. (laughs) (laughs) There's only so much a bracelet can do, guys. They're hedging their bets. They're hedging their bets. Bro. Yo, have have y'all been hearing about all these uh, shark attacks? Yeah, Yeah, man. I tried to tell you about- You saw this? Yeah. I tried to tell you about Fire Island. You were telling me about Fire Island, but in Rockaway, I think it was even today or so, or yesterday, a woman lost her leg. Yeah, a 50-year-old woman. And by you or different rock nah, it's, it's uh, sharks further, in New York? Like, son, like I, Reese Park. I, I spent my whole summers at the beach, okay? I didn't see a shark not one time. Sometimes you see dolphins. But literally, I'm in the, the water every single day in the summer. Not one fucking shark that I see. I heard about a Mako randomly down by, uh, is it called Long Beach or something like that? Or Robert Mo, even down there. Never have I heard of it. I'm hearing on the daily, yeah. shutting down the beaches, can't I read, go in. I read why, though. Why? Pull it up to, I can't remember now, but it's something to, to do with- the water's warm. Yeah, it's something to do with climate Sam, change. the water been warm. I remember in the summers, we go we go <laughs> out to the fucking <laughs> beach, the nah, water's bro. warm. Dude, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. I was in Vegas. <laughs> I think they're overfishing, bro. I'm being honest with you. I think they're overfishing. The sharks are coming because they can smell- uh, it's not even humans. It's garbage. Like there's garbage in the water. People leaving no, stuff on the, the beach. No, the water's cleaner. Is part of the issue. I heard it's dirty. No, the water's clean. Rockaway no, is pretty clean. This, this, look up why so many sharks back in the day. So in, in, in Cape Cod, where the biggest number of attacks are taking place, mm. what happened is they put in conservation measures years ago to help protect the seal population. Now the seal population is all the way back. That's what I heard in Cape Cod. Right now, if you're a shark, that's your main. So it's time Food to source. eat. So the, the adults are all up in Cape Cod. The reason that people are getting bit on Fire Island, New York City, and not getting killed for the most part is because it's the juvies down here. It's the smaller sharks. Hmm. But they're all, you, you'd be insane to swim. I know what he said just you right see, now. I, see, thought he said, I thought you said the Jews are nippling at them. <laughs> <laughs> the juvies, the juvenile, bro. Wow. You better say that shit, Chris. Yo, come on, Chris. You're going to get us God canceled. God damn, you blame Jews for everything? Now Jews are going to blame for shark attacks? Yeah. Come on, God bro. damn, Chris. Listen, it said that with so many other things, climate change is to blame. So here's my thing about the climate change thing. If I was big fishing or whatever that is, you know how there's big farm, a big whatever, I wouldn't want you to say that the overfishing of the seas is causing the shark attacks. I would want to blame it on something else because if you say it's overfishing the seas, now you're going to fuck up our business. I don't think it's such thing as overfishing you. Yes. Bro, they... they Maybe a certain type of fish, but... Son, they, they, there was that documentary that came out. Oh, fuck, I forget I the name of it. I know you're talking about... I don't know exactly black, what the fuck you're talking about. Blackfish? No, no, this is the one that was recently... It was on Netflix and it was about the... Overfishing and what the fishing community or what the a big fish does, where like they make you think that it's straws that are polluting the ocean, where ninety percent of ocean polluting is the wire and the line yeah, yeah, from these big fishing boats, 
And so they they just basically is what I'm thinking they're doing here is just take the attention off the real problem and put it on a tiny micro problem that we can all feel good about doing. Like uh, uh, Dolphin Safe Tuna is another label, right? That you put on tuna when you buy it at the store. You're like, oh, okay, good. They didn't kill any dolphins when they're doing this. The same people that run Dolphin Safe Tuna are the fishing industries. Right. So they're just creating this loophole for their business. The whole thing is fugazi. They don't kill dolphins. They fuck them. Put their dicks right in that hole. I've heard about that. Yeah. I've heard you never about heard that. about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know the crazy thing is? Yeah. Climate change is real as a motherfucker, yo. I was in Dallas on Friday and Vegas on Sunday and Monday. That shit don't make no sense how hot it is, yo. And I thought, I thought Dallas was hot. Dallas was like... Now, Vegas in the summer, bro. It's the yeah. desert. Bro, it was, it was 117. But that's what it is. Yeah. That's what Vegas no, is. No, they say that's not normal. 117. Like, this was the hottest summer on saying. record, but still, Vegas in the they summer. They were like, it's hot, hot, but they were like, it's ridiculous. I'm the dri- I'm the, one of the drivers that was driving me. I was like, man, it's hot as a motherfucker. I said, this shit don't bother y'all. He goes, only if I go outside. <laughs> 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 he was like, I stay in the house. And he's absolutely fucking right. Like, climate, I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Climate change is real as shit. It's not supposed to be that hot, bro. Mm. It's not supposed to be no 117 degrees. And I mean, it's like it's like a, a heat that literally makes you feel like you got to catch your breath. Yeah. You know what I mean? It yeah. makes you feel exhausted to be out. Yeah, like you're suffering. Oh, my God. Like, who wants to be out in that, man? What were you in Vegas for? I went, um, uh, they, you know, they do the magic fashion show every oh, yeah. year. And, um... I don't know, man. I just been like my, my dude Don Juan Harrell. He's a, a fashion designer. He's been behind some like really big brands like PRPS and yeah. um, you know academics. Like you know, those were like big, 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 big brands. And you know he's been designing. I mean, for, with Sean John, I mean, a bunch of different people like for years. But now he's got a brand out called Art Meets Chaos and another brand called uh, Legacy of Resilience. And man, I really just wanted to go see a different level of creativity. Because, you know, when you're in entertainment, you know, you see the same kind of creative a lot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. especially in what we do. It's like personalities. It's, you know, yeah. you know, you see, you see the music artists. You see that. I wanted to see a different type of creativity because, you know, their attention to detail, the way that they design clothes, everything down to like the zippers and the seams and all of that stuff. I just wanted to soak up some of that energy and actually it was it was better than it was way better than I even imagined mm. you know what I mean just being around there kicking it with like my, my man Ty Mopkins was there you know he works at Starter so he designs a lot of stuff for Starter and just running into all of these different designers you know what I mean who not only are they making money they're just some of the most creative people you'll ever fucking yeah. meet like we yeah. d- I think we pay attention to detail I don't know if we pay attention to detail as much as people that design clothes yeah. Because think about it, I'm talking about like this shit like the stitching and the pockets oh, and for the, sure. the zippers and like yeah. they're thinking about every little intricate detail and it was just very, very interesting to see. And not only that, man, when you have conversations with people like the Don Juans or like the, you know, my man Tony who used to be behind uh, a Nietzsche in Mecca, the money that these guys make when they sell these brands. Oh, yeah, it's insane. Nothing like it. And, 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 and you know, some of them sell the brands but still keep royalties, you know what I mean? But yep. it's like, I'm like... Everyone Why in the are world. People having more conversations about everyone in the world this shit. has to wear clothing. Every fucking it's body. It's literally illegal to not wear clothing. It's kind Come of wild. On, man. It's Come illegal on, man. to not wear shit. And everybody wants to be fly, right? To some extent. Self-expression. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's just like just to see all of these people that can tap into like the human psyche, even listening to them describe what sells and why. Mm. And how things sell and why people buy things and how like the biggest influences of fashion now are the athletes. It's not even like it's not even like the models. The rappers or the models almost yeah. the athletes. Yeah. Like it's like they said that dude from the Oklahoma City Thunder Shy, uh Shy, what's Shy last Gilchrist. name? Gilchrist. What's, what's his name? Gilchrist. Gilchrist. I thought it was Alexander something. Shy Alexander. Shy Alexander Gilchrist, yeah. no? I can't remember his name, but he's a hell of a baller. But Canadian, like, Canadian kid. It's like he's the biggest fashion icon. There's like anything he wears, and they, it's literally just them walking in the games. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like they take more risk with the fashion, because I pay attention to what the, the artists yeah, cause Interesting. Because they, they take a lot of risk. You, They walk out for a couple seconds. They either get 
praised for it or they get made fun they of. They The next game, they just, hey, I get a do-over. So if you so. at if, if you at the project show in uh, Vegas, go check out Booth eighty three seven hundred and eighty three eight hundred. That's my man Don. He's got the Art Meets Chaos and the uh, Legacy of Resilience stuff out there. Yeah, the fashion fashion is so interesting to me because it's all hype. Like it's literally one hundred percent hype. Mm-hmm. You could be the most beautiful designer in the world and design the most beautiful skinny jean that's ever been designed with the perfect stitching, the perfect color, the perfect everything. If skinny jeans are not in. Don't matter. Your clothing is worthless. That's right. So it is the most fascinating case study when you look into the success of brands because it is 100% built on the hype that you can create around it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are items that can look amazing, but if they're not in, People don't want to wear it because people don't want, people people don't trust themselves. Of course, like you got to be able to like the, the risk takers. Like uh, Alex was just talking about, if you see like a Russell Westbrook or a Shy or Dwayne Wade, any of these people, and you're like, damn, he did it, and that shit looked dope. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna try it. Mm-hmm. But some people are afraid to step out on their own first well, when it now, comes to fashion. So 100. percent And now here's another thing that happens with interesting about fashion is that what makes something cool is that it is different. And oftentimes opposite of what is mainstream and popular. That's right. Mm-hmm. So when skinny jeans are popular, right? Everybody's wearing them. You could buy them at every single store. The, even the biggest stores are making the skinny jeans. The cool kids are going to be rejecting the mainstream by wearing super baggy shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Eventually, those cool kids influence enough people. Mm-hmm. Where baggy it's becomes bag. cool, That's right. right? And then in order to be cool again, you need to reject baggy, and then skinny jeans are popular. And if you look That's at right. fashion over the last 100 years, it is a literal circle. That's all skinny, it does. Skinny, bit wide, skinny, wide. When we were kids, Jinko jeans, the big baggy Ooh. jeans, those are back. That's right. I see young kids wearing these big baggy jeans now. Yeah. So when I say that it... It, when I say that it's all hype, I don't mean that in terms of like these people aren't uh, like artists in what they can create. They are. Mm. But you can create, especially streetwear, you can create hype around something that is costs nothing to make. Nothing. It's it could zero. be a T-shirt that has a little rip on it. $500. Yeah. Because I mean, that's what's in. Yeah. Kanye. Okay. Man, speaking of Kanye, uh, think he's back? No. Adidas said... They're not doing business with him ever again. Pull that up. All y'all people that wanted me to suck a dick. Oh, pull up, goddamn. Now you right after they done sold all this inventory. But it was, I told y'all that was never a, they were what? never back in business together. They were, they were saying from day one they needed to sell the back inventory. Now the back inventory is sold. They're donating like $140 million to charity because that's how much they made off it. And the Adidas CEO says 400 million euros. How much money is that? Adidas CEO, oh, Jesus Christ! I think that I think they're dumb by not getting back into business with him. Who oh, Adidas is? Yep. Because eh. he's doing this slow launch. Nobody's protesting the fucking um, Travis Scott show. Yeah, but that's he, different though. That's music. But I'm just saying that's, they can't. They that's can't. They can't slow, impact that. That's a slow nah. launch back into the public no, eye. No, music. Then, music is the one place where people cannot be canceled. It's like comedy. Music and comedy the same thing. You can you can be mad at a motherfucker and you can stop all his corporate shit, but when it comes to that music or it comes to getting on the when it comes to getting on that stage, you can't stop that yeah, person. But, when it comes to getting in that studio, you can't stop that person. Once Kanye makes another hit, we gonna forget the stuff that he said before, and now he's gonna have his influence back. Yeah, and then- but you know who's not gonna forget the people who. Uh, create the bottom line for goddamn Adidas. So as soon as Kanye comes out there and he hasn't shown no remorse, he hasn't done the apology tour and all of that shit like that, it's never gonna happen. Oh, I think the Adidas CEO put Google that. Adidas CEO said because you're looking at something old. It doesn't matter. The the yes. point is the point is that I don't think any big corporation like Adidas will do business with Kanye anymore. I think it's going to be some corporation that's like really struggling and it's worth taking the risk or a much smaller version or he'll put his own money up. Yeah, or international. Maybe yeah, international who might care less about it. Yep. But still, I think that what those corporations would be concerned about 
is just how erratic his behavior is. Yep. So it's like, I don't know if I can go into business with somebody that's just going to behave in this manner. And He's a liability. No he is a liability. It's just that simple. He is a liability. Because yeah. he wants to behave as if he owns the company, but he wants deals with all upside and protection of not owning the company. Mm -hmm. And when you are the company and you're signing somebody, you need them to behave in a way that's, you know, according to the the morality or the virtues of that business. It's and just you, what it and is. And it's so like, interesting what you were saying just now about uh, people saying, um, you said people say people can make your band, your brand whack, right? Clearly, it's not working with Adidas, but boy, Drake is trying. <laughs> well, well, Drake well, has well. been trying to make the Yeezys whack for a while. He really? Whether, yeah. he, whether he drops the line in the rapper, he's like, don't wear those 750s around me or 730s, yeah, checks, whatever the fuck. Stripes. You know, that, that's yeah. another one. Or just recently at his concert, he was like, yo, I, he pointed at the girl and was like, yo, I fuck with you, you know, even though you're wearing them Yeezys. My man, I like to, I like to fit it half with the blue tee. Yeah, 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 I feel you, dog. You look good. Even though you got those Yeezys on, you still look good. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So he's trying his hardest. Yeah. You know? He really is. <laughs> yeah. He's trying his hardest yeah. to make uh, the Yeezys whack, but people still fucking with it. Like, uh, but yeah, Adidas not getting back in bed with uh, Kanye. I know y'all want me to suck dick, but it's not happening. You know what I'm saying? That's really all this boils down to me wanting to put that out there That's to let really, everybody know yeah. I don't have to ever suck the dick. Yeah. You know what I mean? And speaking of anti-Semitism... Um, what did you think of the Jamie Foxx thing? I thought that this was the biggest bullshit in the entire world. I agree. I cannot believe that Jamie was pushed in any way. To apologize. To apologize. You, you should never have to apologize for someone else misinterpreting what you said based on their paranoia and anxiety. This is a commonly used term. The term is biblical in nature. That's right. For God's reason. God is saying, hey, it can be your closest friend mm. that might stab you in the back. That's, That's right. the messaging. That's right. The story is your best friend, the one that you love, the one that you cared about, the one that you fed might be the person that gives you up. So be careful the company you keep. It's never been, I've heard this phrase said so many different times throughout my life, whether it's, you uh. know, they, they, they even hated on Jesus, so what they gonna do to you? They talked about Jesus, so what they gonna do to you? They even killed Jesus, so why wouldn't they kill you? It's Not inspiration. Not once have I ever thought to myself, oh, that's that, the day is the Jewish people. Yeah. It's never been a thing. We're talking about haters. Also, people. Also, also, also. Haters. If you subscribe to the fact that this is meant to be about the Jews, right? Sure. And I'm assuming it's only Jews that think this, right? I mean, I read the comment and didn't even cross my mind. Of course, because you're even, it's a never normal. Had, and you're Jewish. You're a normal person that would never put that on to Jamie, right? Who's never given you any reason to think that before. It's Ever. just absurd. But if you're thinking that he's talking about the Jews, right? right. That means you believe that oh. the Jews killed Jesus. Oh. Not the Romans, which is the commonly accepted history, yeah. which Jews often reference, hey, it wasn't us, the Romans did it, they did all the thing, they did the discipline, etc. So which one is it? Is it the, the Jewish people that are saying that this is anti-Semitic? Which one is it? Did the Jews kill Jesus? Because that's what you're implying. Right. Because if it's if the Jews didn't, kill Jesus, which is what these people are saying and what is commonly accepted, it was the Romans, then even if he did mean they by a group, it would be the Romans. In no way could you connect this to Jews. So I think that whoever made a big stink about this owes Jamie a massive apology. And also even for Jamie going out there and clearing it up is a unbelievably kind gesture but that's what Jesus, to the Jews. That's what Jesus would want. <laughs> Jesus would tell you when somebody curses you, give them a blessing. That's it. Jesus would tell you when somebody throws some evil energy at you, reply with some good energy. Bro, Jamie's the, just a kind-hearted person. Also, the, the self-absorption, uh, is that the word I'm looking for? Like, to, th to someone who just comes out of a life-threatening situation and then immediately after that wants to let people know, hey, those people that you think are with you in your camp, Sometimes they're not. And maybe they were trying to do some devious, fucked up shit behind the scenes to Jamie. And then he comes out of this life-threatening situation. Yeah. And then he's like, yo, 
I was just in it. Watch your back. By the way. Because you're going to find out. And then to make that about you yo, 50, and how you're the victim and you're aggrieved, someone who almost died. Yo, 50 Cent and G-Unit got a song called They Hated on Jesus. Cat Williams had a joke about people hating on Jesus. But you know who the person he was talking about? Judas. They're not, uh, talking, they're not talking about Jews. Not they're talking about the Judas. Jews. One piece of shit guy. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? So I think Jennifer Aniston got trolled. Well, well. I think somebody I trolled her. I can't wait till we talk about Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> I think she liked that shit is crazy. I think she liked this post yeah. because she read it like all of us, like did. everybody else did. It was like that's right. Nobody these fake even motherfuckers. thought about the Jews. That's right. These fake people they killed Jesus, and I think somebody trolled her. Either started tweeting her crazy, hundred percent, or left leaving comments yep. that made her just do that. This is dangerous. That what she did. And then she comes out and then goes, I do not support anti-Semitism in any way. So to pr protect herself, right, the fucking idiot, to protect herself, she throws Jamie under the bus. Come on. Right man. after he comes out of this life-threatening situation. This man is stressed out. That woman's evil, bro. This man, listen, That's an listen, evil woman. This yo. man is stressed the fuck out. That's an you know evil what I'm saying? woman. He just went through something that could be considered fatal. Yeah. And you just going to motherfucking put more stress on him? You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. Jesus Christ. Where is Jamie's apology, Jennifer? Yo, J Jennifer needs to give Jamie an apology. And any people that were saying that what he did was anti-Semitic and trying to, like, fan the flames of that, they need to give Jamie an apology as well. And he showed the fucking class, of uh, type of classic individual that he is to even go out there and be like, hey, I want to clarify. No way did I mean this. Well, who was it that had a problem with it? Do you That's tell my me? point. That's why I think Jonathan well, Anderson got trolled. But I'm saying he no, obviously reacted to something. Was it the ADL? No, Jennifer posted that. And, well, I, and I guess when Jennifer... What's the chronology? What's the order of uh, events? Uh, this is what I saw. I saw I saw Jamie's post, right. which I read, and it didn't do me anything because I've heard that a million times, right? And then I saw Jennifer's reply, and then I saw everybody going ape shit saying, come, in, come the fuck on. This is an anti-Semitic. Bro, and you know what I it is? I think somebody trolled Jennifer. This, this plays a wider frame, which focuses on Jewish issues, described Fox's post as horrifically, horrifically anti-Semitic What message. is a wider frame? It's a, uh, I don't know, I imagine some blog or something Never like heard that. of it. Nobody's ever heard of it. But the point is... In the Jewish community, that's probably a big blog. I know a lot no. of big blogs in the Jewish community. I've never you heard of wider so? frame. Uh, I know that, even if it's not a big blog, all it needs to be is a blog, and then it starts that momentum, other people cover it, and of course you want to see a celebrity go down, so they're all going to attack him. But I guess what I'm trying to say is like pointing, calling something like this horrifically anti-Semitic. Think about like the actually horrifically anti-Semitic shit that happens all the time. That's right. Like actual right. shit that is happening That's all right. the time. How can you even compare the two? And when you do this, that's that boy who cried wolf shit. Mm. People are gonna, when you call this horrifically anti Semitic, you're gonna start desensitizing people to the term horrifically anti Semitic. The boy who cried woke. The girl who cried woke. woke. You know what I'm saying? Because this is, this is what's crazy to me. It says for some. Jamie needs an apology from he a does. wider frame, y'all. A wider frame, you need to apologize to That's Jamie. right. This These is guys a have called out play. another post by Cardi B, which is pretty outrageous. I'm not gonna lie. What's the post? She said, I guess, when she threw the mic and found out she wasn't going to get charged for it, she tweeted, lawyer's a Jew, he's going to chew up all the charges. But she posted a picture of, like, two Hasidic guys in the hats and the sideburns walking down the street. No, Cardi didn't do that. She did that. <laughs> she didn't do that. She did that. I can't, I can't, I can't defend that. Let me, I, don't know anything. Let me, I don't know anything about that. I don't even know a Hasidic lawyer. Thank you. <laughs> so she you just posted. I mean? she, she just Googled a picture of some stereotypical Jewish people. And it's like, what? They're reading the Torah and the Talmud. They're practicing all day. They're not involved in law and, like that. You Now, that being said, if you're going to have a good lawyer. Also, you know what I mean? You, you, you know, you know, listen, if you know you what's a good but, lawyer. But, but by the way, even listen, with, there are options for lawyers. But talking about shows, but guess but what? what? With, Cardi, with, with Cardi saying that, that's not even new. Right. There's so many people who have said that prior to her. What did Fifty Cent used to call his legal team? No, Jew unit. Oh, really? Yes, oh, I didn't. Know. He used to say that all the time. That's, that's what he used to literally call his that's legal hilarious. team. <laughs> Like, this is they, they, this is not new. What Cardi even did and said is not new. Now, I, I don't think that's anti-Semitic. Would it be considered? Yeah, this should. is what I would say. This is what I would say. It's not worth defending what she did. Yeah, yeah, If you're yeah, getting yeah, into yeah. the argument of what's anti-Semitic and what's not, 
what Jamie did isn't even close to anti-Semitic. It's not even in the same galaxy yeah, as yeah, anti-Semitism. Yeah. It actually has nothing to do with the Jews. Yeah. Right? This is specifically targeted, and there is a stereotype yeah, the, that the, is the used. Yeah, the picture is crazy. And the picture doesn't even match up to what her legal team would look like. Right. It's just her just being ignorant and not knowing that that's even a thing that would be offensive potentially for Jews. You know what else pissed me off about but the Jennifer I, I think, Aniston thing? I think what a lot of things that, that people realize is, if I was to make the argument, is when you come from poverty, the position of lawyer is admirational. It's someone successful. It's someone who is uh, providing for their family. It's a, a citizen who obeys the law. So calling a group of people lawyers is like calling a group of people doctors. It's like calling a group of people scientists, right? You can't, in your mind, you're not going, oh, that's offensive. You're going, I'm giving them a compliment. I, I only knew five jobs that were respectful. It was lawyer, doctor, teacher, whatever. But don't we do that with everything? Don't we, with doctors, don't we say Indians? That, ex exactly, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I, I, don't think, I don't think that in their mind, they believe there's anything offensive about it because they're using it as a compliment. Hey, look at the legacy of this group of people mm -hmm. and how they have these high-ranking positions in culture and society. McCarty wild out with the picture, though. The picture's yeah, crazy. That's crazy. Because her look, she, inaccurate. She's met her lawyer. He probably looks like me. He exactly. doesn't look yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hasid. So to yeah. throw it all in the yeah. same thing. No, no, no. Click, click, some sauce click on, click on just, the, Jennifer, the Jennifer message, because this is what really pissed me off about this whole thing. See, y'all don't be reading. Click, click on the oh, message. I was going to point Click that on out. the message, Taylor. Click on the message. Uh, let me. It says. It says. This really makes me sick. I did not like this post on purpose or by accident. What the fuck does, does that, that mean? mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like this post on purpose. So somebody. Or by accident? So Mark Zuckerberg liked it for you. What the fuck does that even mean? That sounds like Tory Lane saying. Hey, uh, Tory Lane's lawyer saying. Hey, uh, he's got an alcohol problem and he had trauma as a child. But Tory. You didn't admit to doing anything. <laughs> you didn't admit to doing anything. What I, the fuck is going on, yo? I do not support any form of anti-Semitism, and I truly don't tolerate hate of any kind. None of us period. do, especially Jamie. We got to stop doing this to people, man. It's like, yo, clearly Jennifer and, ja Jennifer and Jamie have zero relationship. But it's just whack that we just keep putting these labels on people for nothing. It's like, yo, so so selfish. Like, if you're, if you're a group of people like the Jews who have been persecuted for literally thousands of years, right, you would understand that doing something like this for clicks is only going to hurt that cause. And it's That's selfish. Real. It's like, oh, we can get some clicks here. Us, this little uh, blog, whatever it is, can get a little bit of attention. What is the cost of the att attention? The cost of the attention is people going, oh, we don't have to take it seriously when they cry anti-Semitism. That's the cost. That's how selfish that is. If you were really concerned about the Jewish community, you would make sure to push your efforts towards the very real anti-Semitism that is happening on a daily basis. And please believe you do not have to look far. That's you do right. not have to look far. But this is clickbait bullshit that is selfish and is actually going to hurt your cause. It's wag Jennifer Anderson. But, uh, Chris, from the Jewish That's why I never watched Sex in the City. Why is, <laughs> why is um, a Jewish lawyer offensive? I don't think it is. I think putting a picture of a Hasid. No, not a picture, but I, don't they it even it's say that? It's tall the, black dude. It's tall black dude. Right. Basketball Yo, you play player. basketball. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. you're like, why? Because I'm tall and I'm black. I have uh, to play basketball. Gotcha, it's like... Gotcha. Nah, bro, I thought it would be cool if you play basketball. I love basketball players. I admire basketball players. I wish I could be a basketball player. I didn't think calling you one would be offensive. Mm. And you're like, yeah, but just because I'm black, that means I got to play basketball. Why yeah, can't I? Oh, God. It, it, it's one of these types of like, uh, uh, I don't want to say like racism. It's one of these types of, and even hate is like a strong word, where the person doing it truly doesn't feel any hate. Mm -hmm. But the person receiving it goes... Uh, it, 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 yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? You're making me feel a way. That's why I tell people I'm a proctologist. If I'm first class somewhere and somebody like somebody be like, "What do you do? You, you rap?" Like you know, people don't like because you know people, they'll see people come on the plane and say, "Oh, what's up?" Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, know, yeah. you rap? No, I'm a world world renowned proctologist. <laughs> so you do that all now? the time. Did it yesterday. <laughs> so there's a perfect example, like going up to a black dude. Yo, so you see a black dude in first class? So are you a rapper? Yeah. Like. That person genuinely is excited to potentially meet a rapper, but they don't realize that their internal like racism 
Can't I wouldn't even call that racism. I get what you're saying. Their inter- internal, what is it called? Uh, bias, not stere- bias, not yeah. bias. Uh, Stereotyping or prejudice. Their internal prejudice can't imagine a black person to be a lawyer or can't imagine a black person to be a CEO of this company. They're immediately assuming black wealth, yeah. rap. And that is what- Or sports. I, or sports. Yeah. And I imagine that is what the frustration you guys feel when you go through that situation. You're like- Ugh, I don't think this guy hates me. It just sucks that they assume that about yeah. all the people that look like, like I get the call with a driver think- yesterday. He's like, what you doing this weekend? You performing? And like, I can't even, I'm not mad at that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm like, what, I don't even know what the fuck he- It's a rich, affluent position that people admire. Yeah. Just like a lawyer. But at the same time, it's like, yo, we can do other things than that. We're not all just lawyers or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I can see the frustration. I think if most Jews are being honest, they don't really mind. I mean, within the Jewish community, being a lawyer or a doctor- Very respected. Is Covenant. what you're pushed towards in yeah. a lot of cases. So let's be honest. So like, it's probably a reminder that you failed. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> why- Boy, Kai Sex in the City till she apologizes exactly. to fucking Jamie Foxx, yo. Exactly. No, Jennifer Anderson need to apologize. <laughs> said, to what? This. We're boycotting it, bro. We're boycotting <laughs> Sex in the City. She's not my friend. What'd you say? <laughs> what else? Got- no, she was on Seinfeld. We're boycotting Seinfeld. Seinfeld yep. What else was she in? She was definitely on uh, Sex in the City. I didn't know she was on Seinfeld. She was on Full House. House. Yeah, she was on Full House. She was fucking on. Um, yeah. She was Jesse's wife. Yup. We're boycotting that. That's fucking crazy, 100%. yo. 100%. We're, we're boycotting... Um, uh, what's that high school musical? I think she was in that. Yes, we're boycotting that. She was Sue mm. Storm in one of those old Fantastic Four movies too, wasn't she? Definitely yeah. boycotting yeah. all the Fantastic crazy, Four yo. movies. That's crazy, yo. Let's pay some bills, man. Let's pay some bills, yo. It's fucking insane, yo. Salute to Audible, a uh, proud business partner of Audible, man. I love Audible. Audible is proudly celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, 50 years of culture that birthed the most prolific storytellers of our time. Respect the movement, respect the moment, celebrate storytellers. Hear brand new hip-hop memoirs, podcasts, and exclusive musical performances on Audible, free all summer long. Like new volumes from Audible's groundbreaking words and music series, including Snoop Dogg's From the Streets to the Sweets and Yasin Bey's A Dynamic Career in Communications, DJ Drama's Gangsta Grill podcast featuring the mixtape legend in conversation with hip-hop greats, including two Chains, Lil Wayne's, Wiz Khalifa, Jeezy, T.I. and Pharrell. Binge-worthy, audible original series like The Greatest Day that takes listeners inside the making of hip-hop's greatest photograph, XXL Magazine's iconic 1998 cover that saw over 100 of the day's greatest hip-hop artists assembled for one legendary image. I was just talking to Black Thought about that. Chuck D's Can You Dig It? about how a gang peace treaty in the Bronx set the stage for the rise of hip-hop culture. Or the mother load featuring hip-hop heavies like MC Light, Angie Martinez, retracing the history and future of hip-hop through the lens of its most influential female contributor. Hear unforgettable hip-hop originals like these and more essential stories on Audible. Listen free. Go to audible.com slash forever. This episode is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Okay, same active ingredients inside Viagra Cialis, but this is the chew, the one that we rock with. The hardest dick you ever delivered in your life. And you know what? You're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Bluechew.com. Use the promo code IDIOTS. And give your girl the weekend of her life. Now let's get back to the show. Church announcements. Uh, I got to salute my homegirl, Alicia Renee. Unleashed for Love is out right now on Audible. Salute to uh, Audible. Uh, Unleashed for Love is a romantic comedy. Um, a romantic comedy that stars Alicia Renee and Logan Browning and Pretty V and Jess Hilarious. And it's just, you know, based on... A series of maybe true events. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As you see Alicia try to navigate uh, her way through this industry, but also through her love life, man. Salute to everybody who's checked out the project on Audible. Um, salute to everybody who's left a review on Audible. Um, just continue to go listen to it. Continue to download it. Check it out. Love to know your feedback. Unleash for Love, available on Audible right now. Uh, big announcements. Australia. Mm. I'm coming. Mm. The Life Tour is coming to Australia. Tickets are on sale, I believe, right now, okay? Depending on when this episode comes out, but by the time it comes out, it will be on sale. Uh, Go get them, theandrewschultz.com. The pre-sale code is Andrew. We're coming to Perth, November 13th, Adelaide, November 15th, Melbourne, November 16th, Sydney, November 18th, and Brisbane, November 19th. 
Very excited. It's been too long. I love you, coke obsessed degenerates. And uh, <laughs> it, it, they do so much coke in Australia. It's unbelievable, bro. Really? More cocaine in Australia than any other place in the world. Ooh. They're obsessed with cocaine. Okay. And they spend, and it's like if cocaine in America is like $100 a gram, it's $300 a gram over there. So it's like their yeah. weed over there? It is unbelievable the amount. They love it. Where they, they really? Love it. Where are they getting it from? I think it's hard to get there because it's so remote, right? And that's probably why Where'd it's so you get expensive. This from? Say what? Where'd you get this from? I did a lot of coke when I was in Australia. <laughs> oh, I got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Got you. Now you get over that jet lag, you know? <laughs> got you. Now, anyway, so shout out to Australia. I'm going to see you guys there. Uh, also, more dates um, that we have or other shows are all up at theandrewschultz.com. Full lineup of shows that have been announced already are there. See you soon. And on Life Tour. Peace. Oh, and one more thing. I want to tell y'all uh, this Saturday... I'm having my annual back to school drive and fish fry at Berkeley High School in the student park student parking lot. Okay, 406 West Main Street, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. It is from 12 to 3 p.m. while supplies last. We got free food, free backpacks and school supplies and free haircuts. Okay, so uh, this Saturday from 12 to 3. Berkeley High School student parking lot, my annual back to school driving fish fry. And I do want to shout out my girl, uh, Angela, man. I want to salute my homegirl, Angela. Let's do it. This is her brand, Carviva, you know, and Carviva, I mean, it's available on Amazon, but now it's also available in a uh, stop and shop. Oh, cool. You know what I'm saying? So salute to- uh, What is it? It is a detox drink. I mean, she has a bunch of different ones. This one right here is uh, antioxidant juice. This is actually for detox and it's plant-based, you know? Great. So it has higher than three and a half cups of blueberries. So if you're one of those people that like to do blueberries every day, you know, because you know it's a good uh, antioxidant, mm -hmm. you just drink one of these called Viva Detox. This is the grape kiwi, man. And I just love what Angela's doing, man. She's just a beautiful, you know, Asian woman who's out here hustling. And this is in Stop and Shop right now. And I can't wait until one day, you know, some company comes and buys Carviva for a couple of billion dollars. Uh, you know, uh, all you talking. companies that want to do plant-based juices, Angela got it figured out. So go support my peoples. All right, now let's get back to the show. What we got? Oh, that Montgomery, Alabama fight. <laughs> According to witnesses, the brawl started when a pontoon boat stopped at the riverfront, preventing a riverboat from docking there. In footage shared to social media, several white people who were on board the pontoon boat are seen attacking a single black man who was allegedly a dock worker. Additional footage shows multiple black men and women coming to the worker's defense. Montgomery police said they responded to the disturbance at 7 p.m. and arrested several of those involved. Charges are currently pending. What were your thoughts, Schultz? I've only seen clips, but okay. there was one clip that I saw that was so fucking cool. Well, there's two things. I love the hat throw, the Bobby Schmurter, like right before the fight. And then I love there's this dude that sees the black security guard getting jumped. Mm -hmm. And there's a dude from like across the water. Or he jumps from the riverboat. Jumps in to help him. 16. That was. So cool. What I, what I really liked about that is once he got over there, I like seeing the footage of him fight because I'm just sitting there thinking like, bro, I can't even swim. <laughs> the fact that he swam all the way over there, then climbed up on the dock and still had the power to body slam somebody. And the, and the cardio. The, that's what I'm saying. You don't want to fight that man. <laughs> you don't want to fight him. This was um, This was very interesting to watch. Did it feel good as a black dude? Did it feel good? Yeah, yeah. I, it's I, like all the black I'll tell you what felt good. I'll tell you what felt good. Come in to support That's what a person that they didn't even know. That's what felt good. But they saw him getting jumped. That's what felt good. That, I, I thought the it was unit, pretty yeah, beautiful. The, the unity and the solidarity and the group operation that was showed, that's what felt good. And putting yourself in harm's way, it's like dangerous. These people are fighting. What? You in don't Alabama? even know the guy. Yo. And there's guns. The white people could have easily had guns in them goddamn boats. Not, not, not saying the black people don't have guns too, but God damn. I'll tell you, the, I'll tell you who lost in this whole thing. Crocs, bro. Crocs right, are supposed son. to be very durable. Yeah. Crocs are supposed to be something that people put on and they yeah. can go through any terrain. Can't fight in Crocs, yo. Pull up a still picture of those Crocs, yo. Yeah, it's crazy. They Pull up, up a still ankles. picture of those Crocs. Yeah. Them shit actually looked like crocodiles biting her ankles. <laughs> the way she busted out of them and yeah. the way they were jagged, that looks like two crocodiles latched <laughs> yeah. on to her fucking ankles, That's yo. a him. That's a him. Yeah. 
That's like that wasn't a guy. That's yeah, him right there. He got titties, but it's him. Yo, that whole time I thought that was a girl. I know you did. So hold on, a girl threw him in the water. Then there was a woman fighting him. Yep, probably did. Oh, they was drunk as shit. Yeah. Like, God damn. And keep in mind here, if anybody doesn't know the story, the people... Hold on, everybody thought this was a white woman. Look, nah, it nah. says white lady gets beat out of her Crocs. Yeah. Like, I thought it was a woman. Nah. Could be a woman, you never know. You, could could be, you, know, you know what? Class. It could be a woman. Could I guess, I guess the, just to let everybody know the context, especially people who are foreign, like, the white dudes were at had, were on a boat. They were asked to move by the security guard, yeah. and then they refused to move. And then they jumped the security guard. And then all it these really guys- was one asshole. And that's my thing, right? Instead of jumping the security guard, control your asshole. Yeah, you know he's drunk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why would you allow him to just start swinging on the security guard like that? And then his friends that came running over. They just, they don't know what the fuck going on. They just see that guy fighting. <laughs> Yo, my man throwing that hat. The hat was that so was fire. Why does no, why do they allow this dude to do that to the security guard? Mm. Like, at what point, like, see, and these guys just come out of nowhere. They just, like, no. Figure out who's in the wrong here. Yo, my man who jumped in the water. Nah, but you see, you see a man fighting, like, you just gonna fight. You don't got time to ask questions. It depends. Not if you know he's drunk as shit. <laughs> exactly. And he's, and he's and already in the wrong. If that's you right. see a man fight, even if your man is in the wrong, that's not the first time that and guy has done that. After Alex. I don't know. Alex, that's not the first time that guy has jumped on somebody like that. You, we all know our drunk friend who bugs the fuck out when they drunk. That's that guy. Because there's no way you just start yeah, swinging on a security let guard like that. a drunk friend get beat up. But I'm not going to let my... It's a one-on-one. I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let my drunk friend even get to the point of fighting. I'm like, yo, get your drunk ass in a fucking That's right. boat, oh, yeah, dumb ass motherfucker. I'm and sorry. Now, if I just pull up and they jump in my friend and I don't even know that he was... I don't even know what's going on. That's right. It's on. Oh, yeah. But if you know how drunk he is, you know you're in the wrong, you know everything that you guys have done is fucked yeah. up and this poor guy's trying to do his job. That's right. You caused all of this. That one the, dude. The, the only thing I saw. He's Peter Quill, yo. He's Peter Quill at the end of Endgame. Oh. They had fucking things. They had it ready to you know go. What I'm saying? Bro. And he bugged the fuck out. Oh my God. The funniest. See, see, see the person with the blonde hair? That's a woman. The one with the blonde hair. You see her? Yeah. She's the one that's gonna throw the guy into the fucking water. Look at this shit, yo. Look. The, the she's only, swinging on him. The only thing that didn't feel good was. Look, look, look. That's a woman. That's fire. Damn. <laughs> what the fuck? You said the only thing that didn't feel good was what, Alex? The dude that hit a woman with the chair. He just got caught up. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 he that just got caught up. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he sounded yeah. like Travis Scott in Rome saying, yeah. there would be no utopia without Kanye. There would be no Travis Scott without Kanye. Yeah. There would be no Rome without Kanye. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. There, there was Rome. Boy, this is what you don't want. You don't want none of these old, this, this is a number old man strength, bro. Oh, yeah, you don't want them old bro. men. Jump, when you don't want an old black man getting on your ass, I'm Ooh. telling you that right now. Ooh. That ain't, I'm telling those are cinder blocks he getting hit with. Yeah, you don't I want mean, it. just slow and hurtful. Boom. Boom. And here he come with this chair. <laughs> 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 that chair is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that chair is true. Chair is All jokes crazy. aside. This shit is hilarious, though. Watch how you just wax this woman for no reason. Why? <laughs> what the God fuck? Damn, <laughs> and them cops, them cops are like, all right now. Yeah, yeah. We, the cops didn't break up shit the whole time. But they're like, okay, god damn it. Y'all, you, you just went too far now. You just escalated it for no goddamn reason. This is funny, too. Watch this white woman come over. Watch her. Watch her. Get the fuck back. Back back the fuck up. Back up, Martha Stewart. <laughs> what the fuck? This shit is crazy when you really think about it in hindsight, man. And it's going to be a lot of arrest from this. I'm telling y'all that right now. Because, you know, the reality of the situation is there's a lot of self-defense here. <laughs> there's a lot of assault here, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's going to be people that get arrested on both sides. Yep. All right? <laughs> okay? And, you, you, you know, and, and by the way, those are the, those are the consequences and the risks that you take when you're standing up for people. Mm-hmm. It's just that simple. That's not real, <laughs> Taylor. I didn't think so. That's photoshopped in, you crazy person. <laughs> I would like to think that. that happened. <laughs> why no? Why is he not fighting? Me. Me. You are not helping. No, I would be helping. This smile. Nah, you got beat up. Nigga, stop playing. You got beat up. Um, <laughs> I got beat up. You can't just swim. I just put you in the 
I definitely would have jumped in the water. If I had to jump in the water, <laughs> like, if I had to jump in the water to help, I'd have just pulled out my phone. I'd have been that guy. Get him! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get like, him. Got him! Bitch. Got Get him! Out to it. There you go, King! Go, King! That would have been me. I saw Martha Stewart yesterday on the plane. What? She's pretty still, man. She's like 80 years old. And she's beautiful. Yeah, Martha's interesting because like uh, the greeters hate her. So, like, Why? I don't know. That was just the conversation the greeters were having with us oh, in really? Vegas. They was like, one of the greeters, they asked one of the greeters, that she, they asked who they wanted to do. Yeah, <laughs> me and Martha, because he's on the same flight. And she chose me, because she said, I've worked with Martha before. And it's, <laughs> it, ain't, like, it, ain't, it ain't like that. She yeah. was like, she's so mean. And she said, the greeters, and she, the greeters said the real shit. The greeter was like, the point of a greeter is to have great relationships with people at the airport. Yeah. So you'd be like, hey, you know. Get your people through it, all of that stuff like that. She was like, if you have somebody who's not nice to these people, it makes you look bad. Mm. You know what I so mean? Now you can't have those relationships at the at the airport. But Martha anymore. was, I mean, she was very pleasant on the plane. I mean, I, you know, when yeah, she's cool. Man. She was pleasant when I, I you she's know, a she real spoke, one. Yeah, she spoke to me and everything. She's pleasant. Is that real? I, I don't know if that's real or not. I think that's somebody playing. Oh, I well, yeah, I don't think that's real. That's not real. I mean, that that sixty-five-year-old man. That's real good. First of all, how would he? How old would he? How how? Why would he know how old the person is? I mean, he's probably guessing. I don't believe that's the guy. Click it. Well, turns out that sixty-five-year-old man could really fucking throw up. Let me tell you something, man. I seen an old man beat the shit out of a young boy one time, man. And when I mean young boy, I mean like somebody in his 20s, and this dude had to be in like his 60s. Then the young boy kept fucking with his hat at a party. <laughs> he kept fucking, he just kept, oh, yo, you in Mom's Corner Stock Line, he just chilling on the porch, trying to drink, mind his business, just kept flicking his hat, <laughs> right? If he did it like three or four times, it wasn't no words, wasn't no, you better cut it the fuck out. After about that third or fourth flick, it was like a pit bull literally latched onto somebody's leg. Like the way this old man dove on this young boy and just had him pinned to where the young boy couldn't do nothing but take the blows. Oh, it was bad. And trying to pull him off, it's like trying to lift Thor's hammer. <laughs> <Was not. laughs> and none of us were worthy enough to take that old man off of that young boy and that young boy was swole up like a motherfucker <laughs> and there's nothing he could do but take that L man nothing he could do what else we got Taylor gang <laughs> no I didn't go see Beyonce I was tired man I was emotionally drained from the Earl Spence Crawford fight still yeah I was gonna no it was the day after I was gonna go see Beyonce that Sunday it was amazing. Um, shit, we might as well You're going to see it, right? No, nah, I'm going to see uh, White Beyonce. Oh, Taylor. Who's the White Beyonce? <laughs> Taylor Swift. Come on, bro. <laughs> you already know who the White Beyonce is. Oh, Taylor Swift? You're right. That is disrespectful. She's way bigger than Beyonce. Taylor Swifty? You can't like, possibly Taylor, compare. Why would you do you that? Can't you can't possibly know. compare come on, Taylor, Taylor Swift to Beyonce. Like, come on. Taylor? That's a good one. I don't, uh, that is a good one. What? Because Taylor sells more. I think I believe Taylor sells more records. Sells more records. Sells more tickets. Does more everything. The tickets. I think comparable. the tickets have been kind of even this summer. Not even mm -hmm. close. Yeah, it is. Not even close. Is, you sure? Yeah. 100%. Taylor Swift changed the U.S. economy. 100%. The Fed commented on it. They're Shit. like, she's she has changed Shit. the yeah. U.S. economy. That's crazy. Yeah. I read something about Beyonce's show was grossing big numbers too, though. No, yeah, I mean, but, her show did gross crazy numbers, but Taylor. Is. Yeah, I know Taylor was killing too, though. Like, how many shows did Beyonce do at? Uh, how many shows did Beyonce do at MetLife? Two, two, two. Yeah. Like, uh, Taylor will do four at the at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. I heard like, people. She might be able to, but she's not doing it on this tour. I heard uh, people are buying tickets for Taylor's show in South America. Because it's, it's cheaper to buy a flight yep. and pay for the tickets down there than it is to get a ticket over there. Oh, no, nah, yeah, 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 Beyonce. I don't even think Beyonce... Ain't nobody is. flying to Brazil to watch Beyonce, yo. Come on, yo. Come on, yo. I mean, they were, they were, but nah, yeah, Taylor, Taylor, nah, Taylor killing. Taylor got the number one tour this summer. And it's not even close. It's really not, because cause second, you know who second is? Who? Bruce Springsteen in the East Street Band. Yeah, well, where's actually, where's... Uh, then Harry Styles. No, uh... Then Elton John. No, The Weeknd. The Weeknd is crushing. And Sharon's number five. Red Hot Chili Peppers number six, Coldplay number seven, 
The Daddy week? Yankee's number eight. Damn. Oh, Kevin Hart is number nine. This might be American artists. Kevin Hart's number nine. Bad Bunny's number 10. It's the top 10. They're American. Yeah, top 10 highest grossing live concert tours. Well, this is of 2023, not of the summer, but still. Yeah, because yeah. the weekend just did the most people that have ever been in Milan, the most people that have ever been out to a weekend of shows in London. Like, his show's crazy. Man, this is, yeah, this, yeah this, this is stupid. Uh, let's do, oh, shit, we got another ad, right? Yeah, let's do, let's do an ad, and then let's do uh, some Why do asking. people like Taylor Swift so much? What is it about her? <sighs> Taylor is crazy. She's talented at music. Is she? She's talented I mean, music. She, she also speaks hits. for a generation. Yeah, but white people. Yeah, there's, so there's a lot of white people. still make it hit. I, I, I also think that, I mean, I've been forced to listen to her entire catalog. I don't think musically she stands out. None that's of the what songs, I was at. That's, that's what I was None of the songs stick with me, but there's no denying the Cap. impact she has on Cap. No, let me finish. Let me finish. I think what it is is she talks about young romance in a way that's so much different than a lot of the hip hop out there, which is all she's really relatable. Sex, to them. like I like super that one song explicit. She got. Which one? I knew you were, we're trouble, trouble when you walked in. Listen, we could play. We did this on Flagrant. We could play twenty Taylor songs that you know every word to the chorus so uh, without listen. even realizing you do. You as well. I I don't think they're great songs. I don't think I don't think they're great songs. But there's no question that kids, teenagers relate to her in a way that's undeniable. Especially Definitely. white girls. And, she, sure. and I'm gonna tell you something else that she did that we don't. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's something to give credit for, but uh, she absolutely played the sympathy card with that remake album. The, the way she re-recorded all her sure. her masters. You know what I mean? Oh, like she, she really made it look like sympathy is her game. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> like 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 when you read the fine details of that situation. Nobody stole her publishing. Not like, even like, close. Who didn't even gave her the opportunity to buy it back? Yeah. And her dad even got paid. They all got paid from it. But she re-recorded her songs, put that album out. That's kind of what propelled this summer tour, Yeah. if we're being honest. It did. You know what I mean? Because it had everybody reintroduced to the songs that they absolutely love, 100%. Yeah, she. that has been flipped and chopped and screwed in a way to make Scooter look bad. And if you actually look into it, it's not even close. Like, it's really not even close. So Man, Ed Sheeran and Elton John have the biggest tours on record. Here's why Beyonce and Taylor Swift could beat them. That's insane. Damn. I want to see Ed Sheeran the show. I yeah, I want to see Ed. I saw him at the Garden now twice, and I was fucking hey, unbelievable. Ed, he would love for y'all to come out. You know you listen to Brilliant Idiots. Well, shout out to you, Ed. Faithfully. You were fantastic at Madison Square Garden when I saw you many years ago. It's my geyser. Do you, you know when he's back in, do you know when he's back in New York? Nah, he just left. He was in. He did MetLife. He had the highest attendance ever at MetLife this summer. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, ever. I missed him. Ever. Today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue screen for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sin. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site business and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords, our most popular products and content. Head to Squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, let's get back to the show. Taylor's a sellout, yo. What'd Taylor do? The fact that she didn't even remotely try to stick up for her namesake, Taylor fucking Swift. I know. You got Your way mama more named you Taylor after Taylor Swift. Of course she did. <laughs> yo, you, yo, it's the truth. Yo, you do it more in common with Taylor Swift than Beyonce. Either my mother or father, stop. How is that the Because I was named after my great grandma, so stop. Your great grandma? Your great grandma was named after Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift uh-huh. is a legend. How old is she? Is she a clone? She's then? a time traveler. You think you just get that successful? Come on, by being here before. She's been here, She's been here before. Wrote all those songs over centuries. Exactly. Yeah, Put them idiot. all out. Exactly. I know you were trouble, trouble when, when you, you walked in. in. <laughs> Shame, Shame on, on you right now. Give us another one. Taylor, she's a very sweet girl. I met her before, but. Who you met Taylor Swift at? 
at the station. I never forget when Taylor Swift first came out, and we were new to MTV, and me and Duvall was up at uh, <laughs> we was up at Times Square, and it was all these kids going crazy, and we was like, "Who the fuck is that?" And they were like, oh, "You don't know who Taylor Swift is," and Duvall was like. Oh, just like you don't know who Gucci Man is. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, though. I didn't know who Taylor Swift was at the time. Um, what else we got? Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. Let's see what we got here. Have you seen Nick Clone Tyrone yet? No, good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I watched it a few times. Really? Yeah. I need to watch it. Broker PJ said, based off the movie, they clone Tyrone. Would you let your clone live or... Kill it. Hmm. Depending on what the purpose of the clone was. Depends on what purpose the clone served. You know? Hmm. There's been a lot of movies about cloning recently, man, that makes you think. It's not even just they clone Tyrone. Even what they did in Secret Invasion was like very interesting. We can do it. The we, fact know, that we can we can clone. Oh, I believe so. We've they done clone. it with animals, we can do it. Like it's the ability to clone is present. Yeah. It's there. Yeah, why did they stop after they did the sheep? I think that, that was the concern. Actually, I don't know if they've 100% stopped because you can clone your dog. So, like, I think Ellen has had the same dog three times or four times. Uh, yeah. Why the fuck does she keep having to get a new dog? Die. Well, it dies. Uh, what did you think? I know. Like, what? <laughs> what did I think? Yeah, I know. You thought, I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think, actually? Now I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hilarious. What? Um, <laughs> Just tell me. No, I'll tell you once we it get off It makes more sense man. if she cloned her cat, right? Because if her cat died multiple times, you know why. Ellen definitely want more pussy. She mm. probably ate it. That's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. You know? but, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh man, what that person says? What is your favorite potato creation? Easy call, man. Come on, yo. Why are we even talking Come about on, this? Come man. French fries. That's it. It's not even close. It's not even fucking close, bro. Come on, French yo. fries is worth the arteries. What you say? <laughs> Nah, I, yeah, yeah. French fries are hard to resist. French fries is the one you eat and you like, man, you know this what I'm saying? That's crazy, yo. The, French, you're going to put the potato chip up with the French fry? Nah. The French fry got everything the potato chip got and it got stuff inside right. that's squishy. Ooh, that's right. It gives you all the feels. Ooh. It gives you all the flavor. It gives you all the <laughs> warmth. Not, potato <laughs> chips ain't even got any warmth. Don't even mention thing, potato chips. That's the hardest thing for me to resist, yo. It's potato chips. Man, I mean, uh, French, French fries, fries I man. I know, I know. You know what I mean? I know. You know we dealing with coronary artery issues and shit like that. But how many arteries you need, really? Man, man. That's what I think. Every time I ask, don't French nothing fries nowadays. make me feel like more of a sucker, Dan, than ordering a goddamn Beyond Burger with a side salad. Shit. Yeah, that shit sounds super whack. <laughs> Man, that shit yo, sounds super a whack. A Beyond Burger with a side salad. Nah, bro. Asking my wife if she wants French fries because she got a zero. Zero on her calcium test. You know what I'm saying? Just so I can, the fries can be there. So I can just <sighs> take one. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you can't just take one, You bro. can't just take fucking Once one. Once that salt hits your lips. Ooh. The best fries, though. The Ooh. best fries? Ooh, now we talking. Are we going with fast food or are we I'm going just across? Drug. Be honest with you. Be honest with you. I had Chick-fil-A fries Friday. I did. I had Chick-fil-A fries last Friday. Damn. I had Chick-fil-A Come fries. On, I was in the airport. You got to do better, bro. I was in the airport. I was in Dallas, leaving Dallas. And I was hungry as shit. I could have got a salad, but... Yeah, but you're in Dallas. I got 12 grilled nuggets mm. and a side of large waffle fries, and them shit was good as nah, a nah, motherfucker. Fast food? Nah. Fast nah. food, honestly, McDonald's. I like Wendy's. Yeah, no, thank you. McDonald's right. yeah. right. the best I like Wendy's. Come on. Nah, bro. Like, Are you about to say what I think you're about to say? The no, other no, no, no. I'm talking about no, he likes McDonald's. Wendy's. Yeah. Oh. I'm McDonald's on. got the best fries. Yeah. If we're just going That's off of fries. I, it, I agree with you. You're What's right. the other fast food that black I people like? I like Wendy's, man. Wendy, you know why I like Wendy's? I have a, I have a, a, a nostalgic feeling with Wendy's because when I used to take my grandmother into town, she used to always want to go to Wendy's. Mm. And she used to want her fries hot. So to me, Wendy's represents the ultimate comfort food. Mm. They changed it. Once they don't sell the yellow... Um, yellow bag where the fries used to come in in Wendy's. That's when. Well, it was the same thing with McDonald's. Once McDonald's started, uh, stopped frying their fries in trans fat, they didn't taste the same. 
They used to fry. They used to fry him in the fact. I was listening to Malcolm Gladwell did a whole podcast about it. They still slap. Yeah, they still really good. What about um five bro or five guys? Five guys. Yeah, I don't remember their fries. You know, and they give you a lot. People think I'm 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 really off with this, so I'm not going to push back if you guys don't think. But I like. The in and out fries. I fuck with in and out fries. I, they're I soggy. They don't fries. have the crunch, the crisp that the McDonald's has. You never had in and out before? I fuck with in and out oh fries. Oh my God, next time we go to LA, you have to have in and out. Okay. That's, I think, the best <laughs> fast food burger. No, nah, I fuck with in and out fries. What about checkers fries? That's what, that's what it was. I, 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 I've been making money a long time. I would never. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> checkers fries. Checkers fries. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking talking about pie. That's what everyone always says. Give me, give me. You're talking about impoverished potatoes. He said, y'all, he said, he said your friends are poor. That's what he said. He said your poor friends are poor. Friends. Next question. Don't act brand new. Don't act brand new. You poor ass hoes. Don't act brand new. I've never eaten that checkers in my life. Really? Never. Not saying I'm I, not a fan of checkers. Trust I, me. I'm just saying. Adrian, no. Nor- Adrian Ortiz underscore 12 says, what's the wildest thing you want to do before your movie ends. I don't like the way he said that shit, bro. <laughs> What's the ominous. wildest thing you want to do before your movie ends? I feel less inclined I to do wild shit. I got a couple of years. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, better hurry up. Y'all I got know. a couple years. But I feel as I get older, less inclined to do wild shit. And like when I'm when you're younger, you want to do this wild risk taking things. Then when life gets good, you want to like enjoy and indulge in as much as you can. Now I'm not talking about like. And I, yes, I do want to live super long, but like the moments that you really like, if it's being on Anguilla or being in a Amalfi or being at the beach, like you just like, how do I stretch these moments out as long as I possibly can? But that's the beauty of growing up, right? And that's the beauty of living. Yes. Because all the wild shit that we thought was fun really wasn't fun. It just gave us excitement. It gave us excitement. And, and, you, and by the way, we had nothing else to do. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah we were bored. Saying? So bored. we wanted that exciting feeling. But then when you experience joy and you experience... Uh, relaxation. Yes. I think it's just about like, how can I sustain those moments Ooh. as long as possible? Chris just came back from fucking Barcelona. Mm, me too. Are you in Barcelona too, Alex? Yeah. yeah. Doing what? Uh, with the in laws. Oh, word, word. Right. You're not your in laws yet. You're not married. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> You just got to put that in perspective because people like to say, don't let him be slick. Make him sure he jumped that fucking broom. Yep, exactly. Make sure he jumped that fucking broom. broom. No, not yet. (laughs) (laughs) What's that mean, jumping the broom? That's a black black people thing. And Taylor is part of one care, man. What are you talking about? (laughs) What's jumping the broom mean? Is he going to jump like a Nobody actually jumps the broom, do they? But what does it mean? Really? Yes. I'm not saying you to a wedding when somebody jumped the broom. My best friend. That was a ghetto ass wedding. <laughs> it wasn't ghetto. It wasn't that. ghetto. Taylor quick on her feet sometimes. I know. Not it was my best. <laughs> I'm serious. She jumped the broom? Yeah. Why? She's a witch? <laughs> Can you explain what the fuck this is? We, we, couldn't, it's, we it's, had to jump the broom when we were in slavery. You had to jump a broom? I don't believe no. that's it. Oh. When we were, where we, <laughs> where we were, Taylor, you sure about this one? I don't believe this one, Taylor. When we were in slavery, they couldn't. When we were in slavery and we used to play Quidditch professionally. No. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like it was a, supposed to be a secret, so that was... Uh, huh? huh? It says the act symbolizes a new beginning and a sweeping away of the past and can also signify the joining of two families or offer a respectful a- nod to family ancestors. In fact, even after slavery ended, some descendants still chose to jump the broom to validate their marriage in lieu of having an officiant. She said thank you, but you were totally wrong. Because he said slavery, wrong. though. <laughs> you he said, said slavery. He said after you said slavery. The word he said after slavery. He said after slavery. <laughs> you were totally wrong, though. That's it. What Taylor was trying to say is the practice, That's it. The practice is documented as a marriage ceremony for enslaved people in the southern United States during the 1840s and 1850s who are often not permitted to marry legally. That's not still not what you said. Why? What did I say then? You didn't say none of that. All you said was they were slaves. That's I it. didn't say they were slaves. That's you said, not you what said, happened. You, said, you did say it derived from but slavery. But you know what I'm trying to say, though. So no. can I get an apology? You know Thank you. You was half right. I hate no, y'all. Dude. Hate me? Scro- what did I do? I really hate all y'all. Scroll down, What did I do? I was ignoring you. I'm like, <laughs> scroll down, Taylor. What else we got? my phone. Nah, you, were, you was at the bro. Bro. Let's do two more on Taylor Gang. <laughs> Taylor Gang. Ooh. Ooh. Does Charlemagne still pay only to pass due on his cell phone bill? You already know. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't believe you still do you that. No. I don't believe it. Educated investor, God. you already you know. You have a business manager that's paying your bills, guaranteed. Never. I'll fire her if she fire, pays that whole bill. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? You cannot do that. Why would you pay the whole bill? No, no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't ever assume I want my whole bill paid. Uh, Pizza Jones, this is a good one. How many glizzies do you think you could guzzle in 10 minutes? Bro, I, I, saw like a video. I saw a video. This is two dudes, and one dude is feeding the glizzy to the other dude. Right? Did you see Crazy. his video? Yeah. And he's like feeding it to him like overhand. It's super wild. And the other dude, without using his hands, <laughs> bends over, takes a bite of the glizzy. And their homies filming, and they both look up and they're like, oh shit. And the one dude starts to go, nah, nah, we're brothers. It, it's different. <laughs> it's, it's okay since we're brothers. Like, yo, that shit was amazing. So that don't bro. mean nothing after seeing bro, the Island okay. Boys tongue each other down. Yeah. So that's yeah. true. Island you Boys changed the game for brothers, bro. Brothers fuck. Yeah. <laughs> From what we saw. Uh, how many glitches do you think you can take boy. down in 10 minutes? Yeah, two. What? It's two. I can do 20 glizzies in 10 minutes. Nah. 30 seconds of glizzy? Nah, yeah, but it's also about how much can you, like, fill, Paul. Uh, Man, I was fiending uh, for glizzies one day last weekend. Not last weekend. The weekend before last, fiending yeah. for glizzies, bro. Okay. Weekend. Man, uh, <laughs> I ordered nothing but the tur <laughs> I ordered what you turkey do? glizzies you, with the you... vegetarian chili. Oh, wow. Ooh, and the wheat hot dog buns. Put them shit on the grill. Oh, them shit was so fucking good, yo. Really? Oh, my God, man. Did you ever just go no bun? <laughs> you never, you never go glizzy like the no chili. bun. What's the, what the chili gonna be on? You know what I'm saying? Unless you eat it off a plate, but then that's just pork and beans. You know, <laughs> what which about, I don't mind. What about glizzy no bun, no chili, little mayo at the tip? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> nah, I can't fuck with that. Nah. <laughs> oh, damn. Why not? That's nasty. Really? Yeah, it's nasty. Um, Croc Cafella says, "Have you ever saved somebody's life?" <laughs> Well, define that. I mean, technically, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you could say that. You saved Alex's life. I saved yeah. Alex's life, but he would have lived. Fuck out He'd have lived. He did save your he life. He was got a in my life. I yes, did he save did. my life. See how they forget, yo? <laughs> you did save his life. You saved your life. How would you have gotten Alex, out? Alex, you saved your fucking life. I saved your life, yo. He was locked up right now. He's short in my sentence. He was a fugitive. He short He was done, bro. They locked you up, yo. him locked up, You were a political prisoner. You were fucked up. I was going to do one to three months, and he got it down to one. You were in there for like, how long? 28 days. 28 days. Bro. I swear it was like three months. It you know, 30 like days it. you got a glass of gobble like glizzies. <laughs> 30 days they start making foreigners gobble glizzies, That's man. Fact, you didn't bro. know that? That is a fact. Shook so got you out right in the dick. That is a fact. He saved you. your fucking life. Now you saved my life. Because you yeah, probably had to fight bro. for your life in there. You, would you have done it 30 days in? <laughs> wait, it's five of my life? Or wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. <on. laughs> you almost got me there. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> he hit you with the Iron Man, bro. Oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on, scroll back up, Taylor. There's one I wanted to do. Let's do one more. Uh, this is a great one. Producer Omega says one's got to go along with all of their movies. Leonardo DiCaprio or Tom Hanks. Oh, God, easy damn. fucking call. It is, but easy it call. Is, it is. Easy but call. You still gonna be upset that you don't have those DiCaprio movies? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Come on, catch what? me if you can. Nope. Inception. Love Inception. Love it. No, nope. for Wall Street. Wolf of Wall. That's like Wolf my of favorite Wall. one. Love it, love it, love it. But, but you can't go without Forrest Gump. Come on, you man. You can't go without Big. Big. Come on, man. I can go without Big. Forrest no, Gump, big I can't classic, go without. Bro. No, you can't, can't go without Castaway, bro. Castaway's Come crazy. Come on, man. You can't go without. You can't go without the man without. Uh, man without auto was a tearjerker for me. I love it. Auto, but I can go without it. I'm trying to like Philadelphia, bro. You would. <laughs> y'all don't like Big? Y'all don't would. like Big, yo? Big is fucking fantastic. Nah. Oh, pull no. up Tom Hanks catalog, Taylor Tom Hanks got Yo, go, bro. I, yo, you really He's making a... me nah, question bro. this nah, whole bro. shit. Nah, bro. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. All the toy stories, bro. What oh, are we talking shit. about here, bro? Oh, the good toy point. Story. Bro. Toy story. What the fuck are we talking about, yo? Come um, on, yo. Come on, man. Come on, oh, no, man. No, there's not many. There's a bunch. This shit is fire. The Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code Come on, fire. man. Pull up Leo. Pull up Leo. Hold on Come a on, second. Man. Let me Come see on, if we man. got a Road to more. Perdition. Nah. Come on, stop. Road to Perdition. Nah. Green Mile. Come on, man. Keep going. Come on, man. Scroll down some more, Taylor. Damn, we, we lose. Catch me if you can. Sleepless Either in way. Seattle. <laughs> fucking Splash. You got his fucking mind. We're not getting rid of Splash, bro. I ain't never seen it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Splash was Ooh, fantastic. Saving Private Ryan. Not saving Private saving Ryan. Private Ryan. Turn it in fucking hooch. Yeah. 
Come on, man. Yeah. yeah you really you saying the it? whack ones loud. <laughs> yeah. Like, man. just. You didn't like Splash? <laughs> just go over them with me before bro, you put Splash the umph on. Splash fire, bro. What else? First of all, let's also be clear about one other thing. You're talking about the greatest all right, actor get up. of all fucking Get up Leonardo time. DiCaprio. Show get some goddamn DiCaprio. respect. I don't know about that. I'm talking about rewatchability. Wow. Wolf Not of really. Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street, great. Love oh, it. Don't look up. I forgot Love, don't look up. Inception, 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 crazy. Love it. Django. Titanic. Django oh, fire. What's that ship in oh, Boston? Django. Yeah. The Boston the, one. The, the departed, departed. Crazy. Departed. departed fire. Blood Diamond. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Blood Diamond was crazy. It's like Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York. Fire. Romeo and Juliet. Nah. nah yes, nah. bro. Nah. Hanks, bro. Keep nah, it Hanks. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping Leo, so. You're yeah, really Leo. not. How many old movies do you rewatch all the time? I watch I, this all re the time. I'd rather rewatch some of these Leo joints no, no. than the Tom Hanks no. joint. What do you rewatch now? The, the, Wall Street. Don't, the Departed, I will really Inception, watch. I watch Mad Times. Departed, that's Inception. on you, run it. Um, Wolf, of Wolf of Wall, Wall Street, Street yeah, let it go. I fuck with Wolf of Wall Street. Keep going. Django Fire. Hanks, bro. Come on, man. Nah. Yo, all nah. I got to say, it's closer than when we thought. It's not. Yeah. Catch Me If You Can is both of them, so we lose it. It's but not. It's closer than you what gotta we thought. You got to get rid of Leo for Titanic alone. Oh, my God. Titanic, bro. Hate it. Yeah, you hate it. <laughs> never liked Titanic. I think you would like that movie than where the white people can't swim. No, nah, I just never liked Titanic. <laughs> I never liked Titanic. Y'all like y'all really like Titanic? Pizza? I like it. I, nah, I never liked Titanic. Was great. Yeah, I like it. Was it. Movie. Come on, bro. They smoked her out in a Model yeah, T. Yeah, I know. Come like, on, bro. Fogged up the windows. Y'all ain't like Titanic, That's your bro. favorite part. Oh, hell yeah. Y'all ain't like Titanic. He threw it a dog, bro. He threw it a dog. It's okay to admit that y'all didn't really like Titanic. He just throw it back. When he was crazy. When he was crazy to admit y'all really didn't like Titanic, yo. It was. Bro, and especially when, the ending. The scene when he's paying her, like, come on, bro. That, that shit is good. overrated as fuck. Right. It was. Nah, it isn't. Painted her, then he painted her. Titanic was garbage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes <sir. laughs> Titanic was garbage. Yeah, what's Basketball eating Gilbert diaries. Grace. Basketball diaries, bro. Come nah, on. Hanks, bro. The beach. Yeah, nah, I'm, I'm going to leave. It might be Leo, Hanks, bro. I think he, well, what about, who's a better actor? Tom Hanks. Oh, no, Tom, nah, Tom, Tom Banks acted, yeah. but in terms of the catalog... Hanks. Uh, that's Yo, you don't even this is how great Tom is. You don't even know the directors of his movies, bro. <laughs> that motherfucker can take a bum hmm. and win a bum and Oscar. Bro. Leo is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely amazing actor, but he does his best work when he has a genius director that's as right. well. That's right. I don't know who directed half of these fucking Tom Hanks Tom movies. Tom Hanks is the uh, that, if, yeah, Leo need a seed, bro. Leo need a seed if we gonna have a yeah, real but, conversation. But look at Leo's roster, though. Leo's roster <laughs> is Come bananas. On. Leo's <laughs> roster I mean, is bananas, I bet bro. you Tom Hanks is better. We just don't know it. Nah, nah he's been married it. for mad long. Stop it, stop it. You acting crazy right now. I bet you Tom Hanks roster better. No bro. way. Nah. Yo. So Tom was the first one to go down with COVID, bro. Like, sorry. He, he, took, he, he took, had a week he, of he took it. Yeah, he's not ready. Nah, nah, bro. Leo's like the he University of Alabama, bro. He was, he, he was <laughs> the sacrifice. The best recruits going through Leo. Yeah. <laughs> he was the sacrifice. Yo, the money pit? Come on, bro. Stop it. All right. We, what y'all talking about? I gotta about? go. I gotta get out of here. As always, <laughs> yeah. if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace. Bird.